Hey everyone, Mary from SVG Cuts here with some brand new projects for Halloween. And as you can see, my setup here looks completely different because I am moving my video studio and until it's ready, I figured I would just shoot right here where I took the photos for my projects. So I have this really fun barn, which I put a lot of fun, fun details into, like the spider web embossing on the roof panels and the bats and the cute little banner and the corn stalks I think are super cute. And even some of the windows, you can see some little ghostly, ghostly faces. If you want to print on your vellum, you can do that. Or you can leave it plain, it would look really cute too. So you can illuminate it from the inside with some battery powered LED tea light candles or with a little string of LED lights that you can plug into the wall because there's a little hole in the back. Um, or even if it's not lit up, it looks really cute and you can use it as you know a really special gift box or just some decor or as a gift. So like most of <clears throat> the buildings on SVG Cuts, the roof comes off, it's the lid and then it's um, nice and finished off on the inside. We also have a cute little gift bag here with a kind of a vintage inspired cute little cat. And then this little guy I think is cool because it's, it's pretty quick and easy to put together. So if you wanted to make more than one, it wouldn't be very time consuming. But then it's just a, a little sandwich baggie of popcorn fits inside. And who doesn't love popcorn? And it's nice and um, you know economical to just throw that in there and then you can make a bunch for some people. So we also have a really cool little box card, which is cool because it folds flat to go inside of its envelope, but it also pops up to make a cute little piece of, of decor. So we also have a nice little Jack Lantern face, nice and simple, but it's, um, it's black vinyl. Ooh, it's black vinyl and you could put it like I did on this mason jar from Michaels, or you could size it to a different size to fit something else. Like if you wanted to get a little paint bucket um, full of candy corn, that would look really cute or whatever else you had in mind. So I've got all my pieces cut out to show you how everything goes together. So let's get started. So first let's start out with something simple, probably the simplest part of this kit. And I've got the two pieces of our cute little jack-o'-lantern bag here. And if you want to put a piece of vellum back here, or clear acetate or something. You can look in your project's extras folder and there's a piece of vellum in that, that folder. Otherwise, the bag itself is just these two pieces. I cut it out of purple. And then we've got the, the front here is just one piece and then the two side panels. So I went ahead and folded all these score lines and I went ahead and I rubbed a nice black ink pad on the edges because I think that rubbing an ink pad on the edges of shapes and projects usually looks pretty darn cool, especially if you are using some vintage themed paper like I have here, this awesome Graphic 45 paper, which is the Rare Oddities collection, by the way. But I think if you've got vintage paper, you can go even more heavy with your with your inking and make it look even more distressed and whatnot. So as you can see, I'm just gluing the two side tabs into place. And then all that's left to do <coughs> is put some glue on these bottom tabs, all three of them, and fold that over into place. And then to create your cute little handle, what I did was I took two, two pipe cleaners or chenille stems, whatever you want to call them, and I've got my thumb about an inch up off of the bottom. And it might take you a couple tries to get it to where you're happy with how it looks, but you just want to evenly wrap one around the other. And then maybe go till about another inch over and bend it over. I kind of, I did my first one a little bit of a tighter, you know, twist. I kind of like that better, but you get the idea. And then if you would like to trim them, I have some handy wire clippers. These are nice and easy to trim with instead of scissors that can be kind of tough. I think it's cuter if it's a little bit shorter, 
So all you want to do is pop that through the side and bend it, bend it up and do that on both sides. Then if you want to put a bag of popcorn or a bag of candy or something inside, just a standard size sandwich bag. This is actually six and a half by five, five something, something close to that. You want to put a little bit of you know candy corn or popcorn in there and just slide that right inside. So next for our haunted barn. The base is what I'm going to put together first and that's just the real simple, it's almost just like a rectangle that it sits on top of. So that is made up of two pieces like this and one, two pieces like this, which is going to get glued on here. I already glued the other two together. So what we're going to do with this one, since we glued this one down here, we want to glue this next one up here. So if you look closely, I'm sorry, like this, we want to glue it up here like this. If you look closely, there's a little score line, score line, score line. You don't want to fold it. That's just there as a guideline, a guideline for where your paper is going to go so you can glue it into place. And I, I just happen to be using some shimmer paper, which will look nice. It just, it's a little harder to glue. So hopefully it doesn't give me too much trouble. I actually ran out of black paper and I had already, I already made a last minute run to Michael's for more vellum. I came home, I realized I didn't have any more black paper. I didn't want to run back to Michael's again. So I just decided to use this even though it can, it just takes a little longer to dry. So anyway, you will get the idea of how it goes together. So basically we've got the outside of the paper and they kind of line up like this because it's going to go together like this. So we've also got this base panel, which goes on here. We can just go ahead and glue that on right now. And like I like to do, especially, especially if I'm using some vintage paper, like this gorgeous graphic 45 paper, um, I always like to ink the edges of my shapes. I know I've, I've said that a bunch, but it just adds a really nice touch to your project especially if it's um, vintage, I think. It really gives you a license to get extra, extra heavy with your inking. So I went ahead and, and inked all my pieces for this, these projects. So the next part are the sides of this. And there are four pieces that make up the sides. If you look closely, your machine will have cut a number into the side of each of these pieces, one through four. So all you want to do is glue them together in order, side to side, one through four. So I just put some glue on the tab for piece number one. And you want to line it up as carefully and precisely as possible. And this, this shimmer paper, it's so pretty, but it does take a little bit longer to dry. A little pain in, pain in the keister there a little bit. So now I'm going to put some glue on piece number two and glue piece number three to it. And as you could probably guess, same thing here, piece number three, glue piece number four to it. And then we will close up the loop, so to speak, with some glue on piece number four so that all the sides are glued together. So I've got to hold that a little bit longer than usual because of the, the shimmer finish on this paper. So this side is actually straight, even though it, it looks like it might be folded. So I want to get it in the general shape of the base, which goes like this. So we're going to glue the top to these, these sides here. So in order to do that, I'm going to kind of anchor it here. 
first with it doesn't really matter which uh, which side you want to start with but let's just get it anchored into place and then all you want to do is just carefully work your way around gluing all these tabs into place underneath this top part. Okay, so our base is really starting to take shape. We've got the top part glued to the sides. Now the next thing we want to do is take, there are two pieces like this. Yours are probably the same color as your base because it's all joined together. Since I ran out of black paper, I had to use some gray for these. But they're going to be on the inside. No one's going to see these. They're there for support inside the base. So all you want to do is put some glue on them. Like I said, no one's going to see them, so they don't have to look pretty or be really perfect as long as they are straight. As long as they lay flat when you put them together. So you want to do this to both of them to form a little, a little box. And you want to lay it down to make sure it's going to lay flat. I already glued together the other one. So now, now we can glue these inside the base, like so. Just somewhere in the middle. Doesn't have to be perfect or scientific. And now, as those are drying, all you want to do is cover these edges all the way out to the little corners. You know, you want to be careful so that you don't get glue you know, oozing out, but cover those in glue, cover these two in glue, and then put the bottom into place. So there we have it, the nice base for our barn, so we can move on to the barn itself. So next for the, the uh, bottom part of the building, of the barn, not the lid, we've got four main parts that make up the four sides of the barn. So the first piece, um, if you look at the base of it, which in my case is purple, on the side there's a little one that your machine will have cut into the side. And for the other pieces, there's a little two, a little three, and a little four. So I went ahead and glued the decorative panels and a lot of the trim on. As you can see, piece number one here, I've got a panel, two panels, and then this trim, as well as these two long panels. And then we're going to put a lantern and some vellum behind it next. Then for piece number two here, which is the front of the barn, we've got a side panel. First you want to put the um, this, in my case it's a dark paisley purple patterned paper down. Um, well first we want to glue this, um, in my case this lighter purple color, on top of the darker pattern paper. If you lay yours on top of each other, you can see how the one below it shows through around the edge and also through the doors. Then you can go ahead and put these two white trim pieces on and glue it onto the bottom of this piece number two here. Then you can go ahead, before you glue the white trim on, you wanna put this panel on also. Then you can put this long panel on the side. Then again, we're going to have two lanterns on the side, as well as some vellum behind these windows. Then for piece number three, you actually don't have vellum back here. I accidentally glued vellum on the back of mine. But piece number three has got this top panel, this dark panel, and the white trim on it. And then piece number four, which is the back, has these three donut-shaped pieces glued together onto the inside for reinforcement if you're going to plug in a string of lights inside. LED lights since they don't get hot. And then this back panel, nice and simple for piece number four. So once you've got your pieces looking like mine with these panels and trim glued into place, we can go ahead and put together our tiny little lanterns. So there are three of them and we want to put a little dot of glue inside at the top there. And another one also. 
and then a third one. And you wanna hold it a little while as it dries so that it doesn't come apart. And then this top flap here gets bent towards you as well as these side flaps get bent towards you also. Then we can glue the little bottom into place with two little dots of glue. And this bottom tab gets folded towards you as well so that around the outside those tabs are getting folded towards you. So then we can push it or well either way really from the front is probably going to work work better and we want those those little flaps to come through the back like so. So once those are coming through we can put a little glue behind them and hold it in place for a little bit as it starts to dry. And if you want, you can flip it over and push down. If you've got something flat like a ruler, you could stick it underneath the top part <clears throat> in order to push down nicely. So then you wanna go ahead and do the same thing with the second lantern. So once you've got your two lanterns in place, you can go ahead and glue this piece behind the door. So I wanna outline the shape of the door with a line of glue, as well as some more glue around the lanterns. And then we can glue this into place. And you want this folded part of the vellum to line up with the bottom fold lines of your building. And I'm gonna carefully lay it down here so that I can push down from the top as that glue is drying. Then we can go ahead and if you print it on your vellum, you can go ahead and cut those out. This one, this middle one and this one on the on the right side are going to go on the front of your barn and you don't have to cut it out perfectly because no one's going to see the edge of it. So we can flip this over and carefully glue this vellum here so that your spooky lady is showing through. So if you use the printed vellum in your extras folder then you want to use the other vellum shapes in your extras folder. If you're using plain no, if you're not printing on your vellum and your windows are just plain, you can go ahead and use the vellum in the regular project folder. So there is the front of our barn. And now we can go ahead and glue this nice lantern back here. Glue this other lantern <coughs> into place. And it takes a few extra seconds of holding it in place as it dries a little bit. And you can flip it over and push down. Then for our front, for our, the little door down there, we can take our final, again, if, if you're using, if you're using the printed vellum, like I am, you can go ahead and glue this guy into place. And my lantern's 
coming apart a little bit. And then we can glue this guy into place. I may be rushing a little bit and getting some glue all over the place, but you get the idea of how that works. <coughs> so next for piece number three, that is actually good to go. So we can go ahead and glue them together side to side. So to do that, I'm just grabbing piece number two, since that's the front of the barn. And I'm going to glue that to piece number three here. I want to make sure it's lined up nicely and that it's taking hold nicely. And then I'll put some glue on piece number three. Glue that to piece number four. And it doesn't matter what order you glue these together in, as long as they are, <coughs> well, as long as they're, you know, one through four, if you start with piece number one or whatever, totally fine. So I'm gluing piece number four to piece number one. And then we can close it up by gluing this closed, like so. And as always, you just want to line it up as perfectly as possible so that everything goes together nicely. So next, we can fold all of these over. And if you would like the interior of your house, of your barn, to be finished off more nicely, so for example, right now, as I look inside here, I can see the vellum and everything. If you want, you can look in your extras folder and there are some interior panels to glue inside if you would like to make yours more finished off on the inside. But that's up to you. If you, maybe if you're giving it to someone, you would like for it to look more polished or not, it's totally fine. So next, we wanna put glue on all of these tabs, starting with just one to anchor it. I'll go ahead and do that. Let's we'll start with, well, you know, it's really personal preference. If you wanna start with just one, to anchor it, that can be helpful, but then it's harder to get the glue on the other tabs. So really, however you wanna do it is totally fine. I'm gonna go ahead and put glue on all of these. And then I'm gonna put the bottom on. And I just wanna line it up carefully, corner to corner. So that, so that it's nice and nice and even. The, the front of the barn is a little tricky since it's got that doorway, but you want all of the edges to be lining up nicely. If it's easier, you can flip it over and look at it from the top side down. I'm having a little difficulty here, but you get the idea. And there we go. I just want to line it up before my glue dries too much. So I'm looking down from the inside, lining it up nicely and pushing down from the inside. Hopefully I, I did a pretty decent job. You know, it could be a little better, but you get the idea. So next, you can take your interior piece that goes inside, glue that inside your barn to finish it off. 
And then you can go ahead and cover the bottom in glue and glue that to your base. So next for the roof of our barn, I've got the main pieces of it here with some panels and trim already glued on. This piece number two here has got the vellum behind it as well as this dark panel on the bottom, my white trim, then my white window and these little interior trim pieces. Then for piece number one, we are going to wait for its panel until we put it together. Piece number three here just has a little strip. And then piece number four has got the white trim with these interior panels inside. So let's go ahead and glue piece number one and glue that onto piece number two. And then put some glue on piece number two and glue that to piece number three. And some glue on piece number three, gluing that to piece number four. And then closing it up with some glue on piece number four, background onto piece number one. Pretty straightforward. And now you can go ahead and glue this guy into place. Oop. with some glue on it and then gluing that right into place on the front. And it wraps around, that's why I waited until I had these pieces glued together. So next, we can take our roof pieces which is this big one here. And these little slits are cut out as guidelines. And so are these little shapes. I thought that was kind of helpful to glue this together. It's just extra helpful because you see this rectangle here lines up with this rectangle here. Just takes even more of the guesswork out of it. And then you know that you got it, you got it right. And then this guy's gonna get glued like this. So we'll put some glue on this panel and glue this into place. And the flap, the flap for this one is underneath this one. We're gonna glue that next. But as you can see, those two circles line up right on top of each other. Just trying to make it easier for you and for me. Easier is always a good thing, if possible, obviously. So I'm gonna put glue on that long tab and glue this right into place. So next, next we can take our, our little tower pieces, one, two, three, and four. And I went ahead and glued, in my case, it's a black pattern paper with the window trim on top of it onto each one. And if you look carefully, pieces number one and three are a little bit longer than two and four. The window trim is the same on all four, but this panel is a little bit narrower on two and four. So when you're gluing your panels on, FYI. And then you want each of them to be fo folded like this. Then you can go ahead and glue them together side to side, one through four. So next, we have all four of these glued side to side. And I also have this top piece here with these panels glued onto it. And 
the next thing we want to do is glue this roof, top of the roof, to the bottom part of the roof. And the reason that these little guidelines are here is because they go right up against the edge. Right along this edge here is right where the top of these little guidelines are going to go. And that goes for all of these tabs all the way around. So we can start by by putting some glue onto this tab. And this here is going to be flush, directly flush, edge to edge. But then this will be lined up just like I was saying. So you know what? Maybe it would be easier to anchor this first, since it's pretty straightforward. Corner to corner, edge to edge. Get that anchored into place and then carefully put this into place. So you don't want to see any, any space through those little guidelines. They should be right up against the edge of the tab. So if we look, you don't want to be seeing those guidelines on the roof this way. So what we can do is work our way around and I'm going to go ahead and put my glue just underneath those guidelines because that's where those little tabs are going to go. Just lined up right with that edge just right exactly at the top of those little holes. So then we can put some glue here and this, oops, I went too far with my glue. That's an overhang there, but this will be lined up edge to edge with my glue all over the place, getting a little crazy. I'm going to hold that while it dries so it doesn't come out of place. And then I'm going to go ahead and put some glue just underneath those guidelines again because that again is exactly where those tabs are going to go. I think that's a little easier than putting the glue on the tabs themselves. So I'm pushing from the inside here and now in the middle, working my way down, lining those up nicely. You can see from the inside that we've got it, we've got it lined up nice nicely and it might be a little hard to see doing my best but I'm just doing the same thing for these other three sections here just putting some glue just underneath those guidelines because that's where those tabs are going to go and all of those little guidelines and this uh, this circle that's cut out those will all be hidden by the roof panels, so it's okay that they are there. So now I'm going to lift this up, get some glue underneath it, and this gets lined up just directly edge to edge. Like so. I can push down from the inside. 
And I think I must have missed, missed a little tab somewhere, or maybe not. Looks like we're good. So here is our roof, totally taking shape. And now we can put our, our little tower into place. So, as you can see, the reason that this little circle is here is to signify that that's in the front because there's a circle here. Those two do not actually lay on top of each other. It's just there as a guideline to signify that that's the front. So I slid those through. I'm going to put some glue underneath those tabs. And I'll get to the, the front one in a second. I'm going to push these down into place. Could probably stand to hold them for a little bit longer as they dry, but as long as you get the idea, then this, this tab here can just get folded straight down. So then the next thing we can do is take this roof part, and again, the four sides of the roof are a little bit longer this way. So this is not, if you were to look at it from the top, it's not actually a perfect square. So when you're putting your panels on, maybe just kind of eyeball it before you glue it down and make sure, because these two match, these two match. If you swap it, it might not line up exactly perfectly. Same with this. When you go to glue it on, it fits this way. It doesn't quite fit that way. So once you know which way is the right way, can go ahead and put some glue on your tabs and pop that guy right into place. And as it starts to take hold, you can push from the inside to make sure you've got it, got it the right way. So the next thing we can do is glue these roof panels into place. So I kept them in the order that they were in on my cutting mat, which is in order here, and they just get glued like this, right onto the roof, like so. I'm not actually gluing them down because you get the idea, you can see where they go. This one goes here, and then this one goes here. So there is our roof, yay! So now the only thing left to do is add some cute little embellishments, such as these little pennants. You just fold them in half, put that little panel on the front, and then if you put some twine or something in between here, glue it shut. And as you can see, I put little pieces of ribbon in between each one, and then I just hot glued it onto the roof on each side. Then as far as the bats go, you can get creative. It doesn't really matter how you glue them on, but it looks cool right here, I think. And if you want to bend their wings a little bit, you can do that. If you want to glue one on top of the other one and really bend it out, you can. However you want to do it, it's going to look cool. And then for our corn stalks, there are four of them. And all we want to do is roll them up. Corn stalks are naturally kind of crazy looking and kind of messy, so it doesn't have to be perfect. It's even better if they're all a little different maybe, but once you get it together, you can put a little dab of glue here. And then I actually took some hot glue. I took a hot glue gun, I tied a cute little bow, and then I hot glued it to the front of each one. And I also, kind of messed it up, and then I took a brown ink pad and I kind of just rubbed it all over the edges. Then, to glue it into place, I also used another hot glue gun, well, the same one, but, and I hot glued them into place, just with a dab of glue behind each one. So next for our vintage cat face bag, I've got the two main body parts of the bag here. It's just these two. I went ahead and glued my corner pieces on the front and 
we might as well go ahead and glue these together just side to side. So to do that, I'm just going to put a line or two of glue on that side tab there. Line it up nicely, nice and easy. Super easy, super cute paper. And I'm doing the same thing on the other side. And then you just want to put glue on all three of these tabs and fold that bottom into place. Then I went ahead and glued my cat face together. So the bottom layer is the white, then the next layer is orange, then we've got the black layer on top of that, and then finally on top, this green piece here, and then these green eye pieces go on there. So then we can put his cute little collar together. And to do that, I just accordion folded this piece here, and then we want to put some glue. We're gonna fold this guy in half and glue this onto that part, and then put some glue here and glue this into place. And you're not really gonna see this top part that's holding it together. So if it's not perfectly even or perfectly glued, it's totally fine. And then I think a good way to do this would be to put some hot glue right here, put that into place, put some more hot glue here and glue your cute little cat face right into place. And that collar really sets them off, makes them look vintage and festive and cute. And then you probably, you, it's not the end of the world. You can glue this, just glue it right onto you know, the top right onto the bottom, but I think it helps if you glue it and then right away, right away you want to curve it because if it dries flat, it just has a tendency to like wrinkle up and just be kind of weird. <clears throat> so we're just kind of, kind of give it a nice little curve and then you can go ahead and take some brads and put those right through the side there on each side. So next, next we've got our pumpkin party box card. And if you take a look at your PDF that came with your download, this is the page from it that has the pieces on it kind of laid out here so you can see. You can either pull this up on your computer or your iPad or whatever, or you can print it out if you like to print it out doesn't really matter, but it shows you what those little inserts look like. So I went ahead and glued mine together just like that. And if you look closely at the side, there's a little number one here and a number two here. And then here's the back part. Um, I saved one of these. These all go together the same way. It's just the orange layer on top of the white layer. And then that goes right on top of the black layer. And if you're wondering, when you take these pieces off your cutting mat, they're actually in order like this, which is in order um, from front to back. So front, one, two, back. So when you take them off your cutting mat, they're already in order if you want to keep them in order. It kind of helps a little bit. So, you know, this one is next to this one. They're in a line. They're in two rows, but they're in order. So. If that helps, then that's excellent. So next, I put together most of the this part of the box card. These flaps just get folded over. There's a black strip up there. There's obviously panels on top of the flaps and underneath, as well as some of these decorative things here. And then for the fringe, we can go ahead and put a line of glue on the purple one or a different color if you're using a different color and then a line of glue back there and we can put that right into place <clears throat> so 
the next thing we can do is glue these together side to side, which would be like this. That was a little confusing. This is a back panel, so if you want to stamp something like I did or write something or whatever, you can. And I used a super cute stamp from the same paper collection by Graphic 45, the Rare Oddities. So as you can see, I just formed the box shape with the back and the front of the box. And then I'm going to take my insert piece here and glue that right inside the front. And then piece number one, these flaps get folded towards you. Put some glue on them and they just go right inside with the top of the tab flush with the top of the box and the front of the tab flush with the front of the box. And then before it completely dries, it's nice to bend it both ways carefully and make sure it's going to fold flat. And then we can go ahead and put some glue on these two tabs and glue those into place. And again, those tabs are flush with the top and the back of the box. So there's our cute box card. We're good to go. And if you want to add some cute trim to the front, I put some little hemp twine bows on the side. And I also used some tiny pearl accents for their eyes. But if you want and you have a white gel pen, you could also just use white gel pen to do that too. And it's nice because when it's flat, it fits right inside its envelope. So finally for our cute little face here, it's hard to see um, on here, but I, I cut this with my machine um, and this is the same size face here. So what you want to do next is if you've never worked with vinyl before and you're intimidated, then don't be because I kind of was before I ever did anything with vinyl. I was afraid I was going to do it wrong and did I need to do like a mirror image or what's the trick? Um, but what we want to do is just carefully peel this away, leaving the face in place. Man, we've got some background noise going on. That's what I get for leaving my windows open, but it's very nice out today. So now the question is, how do we get this onto there? That's what the transfer paper is for. And there's several different brands, but I think they, uh, they all work great. So I'm going to put the transfer paper on and push down. And it's probably a great idea to clean and dry your whatever you're affixing it to really well. I have not done that, but for the sake of demonstration, you get the idea. And then you just pop it on here and you peel it off and Voila, super cute. So obviously this is not going in the dishwasher. You're going to carefully hand wash it from the inside, just like any other vinyl project that you would use. But even if you don't drink out of it, you could put a little LED tea light candle in there. It would be super cute. Or shrink it down a little bit and put it on something else or blow it up and put it on something else. So all done, super cute. So there you have it, super fun projects for Halloween. I hope you have a blast making them, or for other seasons, if you want to make this for Christmas or winter with a you know snowflake Christmas pattern paper and snow on the roof, or a patriotic theme for summer, or whatever, whatever else you had in mind. If you make anything, as always, I would love to see pictures on our Facebook wall, or put it on your blog, pin it on Pinterest, put it on Instagram. Either way, love to see, and so do the rest of our crafty friends. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time, and happy crafting.